Hello there, Geminis. Welcome to your reading. So uh, once again, I am sincerely sorry for the delay with your reading. Without further ado, let's go into your reading here. Um, now, when I was shuffling out the cards, I saw this uh, farmland. It's a, a pasture, a ranch image. And uh, I see this man. It looks like the medieval times, though, though based on the clothing that he was wearing and the landscape and just everything else. So I see this man. He has like a... Um, a, a white what used to be a white shirt on and you know it's stained with color with um with dirt and sweat and so it's no longer white okay he's got a pouch full of seeds and he's heading into his um his land um to farm to begin farming he has a stick in his left hand and he's got a bag of something in his right hand a bag of seeds in his right hand um, so he's walking along the rows that have already been prepped. It's like a, a, a row, a mound. It's already uh, prepped. It's already been tilled and, and prepped for uh, planting. And so he sticks the, the stick into the, the soil to create like an indentation. And then he takes a seed out from his bag and he drops it in and then he covers it up lightly. And so he does that with one row after the next and soon he's done with all the rows. And then he goes through the same rows and he starts watering them with this little container of water. And um, at the end of it, okay, so it's like many, many hours have passed when he's finally finished with planting and watering. And he's kind of, uh, he's got his stick planted in the ground. It's like dug into the ground and he's kind of leaning against it. And he's looking at the sky and he's kind of wondering, you know, like he's saying a little bit of a meditation or a little bit of a prayer. I guess he's not really praying, but what seems to me he's, um, he, he's like praying. So he's looking at the sky and he's just like, it's such a gloomy day. I hope that the rains come in time and not a moment sooner. Okay, so he, he's hoping for rain at the appropriate timing. And then he's also like, I hope the sun comes out tomorrow so that, um, you know, we can kind of like blast away this doom and gloom in the sky. And then he's like, I hope that, you know, it's going to be a bountiful harvest so that I can, you know, sell excess in the market and save up some money so that I can get married. Okay, so there is a lot riding on this crop right like there's a lot of, of hopes and wishes and dreams just riding on this crop that he just planted and so then I see him kind of retreat back to his um, his home okay so you have this man he's like probably in his 20s he's very young he's about to get married or he plans to get married and he's looking for the means in which to get married so you know for 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 dowry I don't know if people do that anymore um, but it seems to me like it's a scene in medieval Europe, okay? So there's like a lot at stake. Like if it's a, a bad harvest, he could potentially starve. If it's a really good harvest, he can make uh, quite a bit of money off his crop. And so when I saw this image, um, right away, I feel like the, the overriding message here is there's a lot at stake, okay? There's a big gamble or there's a big risk that um, that's on the table for you. And you know, you guys are very smart. So you're aware that um, with every action, with every decision that you take, there are definitely, you know, opportunity costs. There's a lot of risk associated with it. And especially if it's a risky venture, you know, we have to take a lot of time to mull over a decision before we go rushing into it, right? So what I'm feeling here is there has been an emotional decision. Emotional decisions um, are basically things that pretty much appeal to our heart, okay? There's no rhyme or reason, but it, it's just, you know, we, we have an emotional affinity or an emotional reaction to a situation. It's not supposed to make sense. It's not supposed to be rational. It's just an emotional instinctive response. So there's a decision here that you've been weighing out for a really long time you've been deliberating over this and i do see it's um you're looking back at your past we have here the king of cups okay 
an emotional pull, an emotional draw that you have towards a situation. And uh, looking to the left, this is the past, okay? You've been at a distance from it for quite some time. You're not approaching it. It's not in the palm of your hands. It's something that is out there and you really want a specific outcome. So what's um, crowning this reading here is the uh, king of, this is the king of uh, cups. Underneath, we have here the two of acorns, and um, this is like pretty much the two of wands, okay? Mulling over a decision, and it's something that is very transformative. The wands are about passion, or about desires, or about the things that we're really just very naturally drawn to. We want to get things moving, we want to get things going. It's all about, you know, taking action, taking steps to get something or get where you want to go or to achieve something or to attain something. But the fact that it's the, the two energies, it deals with flip-flopping. It deals with having two decisions that you have to make. And once again, this is an emotional decision. It's something that you're really compelled to do and it's, it doesn't really make sense to you. And being the logical sign that you are, you know, you guys are an air sign and your energy is represented here as the queen of swords, okay? Queen of feathers, queen of swords. This is a bat. And um, if you think about it, it's in a dark cave, right? It's in a dark and dank type of an environment and uh, bats are blind you know they they um they um respond to sound okay sound waves and sonars and they respond they're, they're so responsive to sound that they don't need to see they just need to hear and they just need to trust right and what i'm seeing here is there is an emotional decision that you're making and you're filtering the facts through your head through your mind through that sense of rationality, you know, and what it's really asking you here is to have blind faith and to have blind trust, because this is not supposed to make sense. There isn't a, an explanation why you're so drawn to something, why you respond in such a way, why that situation, that person, that thing has such a strong emotional pull or emotional impact on you and so I feel as if you are like uh, filtering all the facts relating to this situation through your head and in your mind it's like it doesn't make sense I'm not going to do anything about it because it doesn't make sense or it's not practical or it's not rational or it's just nonsensical or it's it's in a way that is in very much in conflict with everything that you believe in that's what i feel so i feel like there's a lot at stake but the nature of this decision is because it's an emotional decision you might be using the wrong organ in your body to kind of make sense of it does that make sense that's what i'm sensing here that we're so prone to analyzing over analyzing mulling over um attributing you know rational qualities to a person a situation or a scenario that we're dealing with and we're kind of like neglecting the key important factor in that it's appealing to our senses it's appealing to a part of ourselves that we're not able to give voice to to give credit for because as an air sign we think with our heads, not with our hearts, right? And so I feel like you're very conflicted, okay? And um, I do sense you're in a state of suspension. So there was a decision here that has been made, okay? And I feel like it, it it's involving something from the past, something that was something that you half-heartedly waited on that's what it seems like to me and um let me give you an example so it's like we really want this one thing right 
and we're just like no it's never gonna happen because you know how on earth could it reasonably happen it's not practical it's not sensible it's so far out of the realm of possibility it will never come to fruition and so while we can't deny the fact that we really want something or we want that one thing to to happen to come into the picture for us so we kind of you know go through our day uh it's in the back of our minds and we go through the motions we go through the day but every once in a while it creeps back in and we kind of wave it away and we tell ourselves it's it's just not feasible it's just not feasible so i i feel for many of you there's a there's something that you're half-heartedly waiting on there's still an emotional connection and a, a really strong emotional pull towards it and I feel like there might have been a, a decision made from your end about moving forward. Moving forward with the things that rationally made sense to you. Your career, your reputation, your success, your worldly possessions, all the things that you can count on, all the things that have a lot of weight, real weight in your world. Um, this is the Six of Wands. It indicates success. Having, um, I also feel like fame and fortune as well, because in the traditional Rider weight deck, this is uh, the man, he's on horseback, and uh, there are a lot of people giving him positive reception and accolades, okay? So I feel like, you know, it's in the back of your mind, and you're not really invested in it, and, you know, life goes on, you moved on you focus on your career you focus on all the things that rationally made sense in your mind to do go through the motions go to work you know uh, take care of your family things like that and because of that there is a yearning and there's a calling for the month of january in which you're questioning i feel did i make the right choice did i do the right thing and what's coming through here we have the this is the lover's card this is the card of gemini underneath it is choices and trust okay i feel like you're having second thoughts you're having doubts you're you have tried to move on and then in the new year something is like it, it, it's like the energy harkens back to a different time or a time before. So possibly the previous year, the same time around the previous year when something entered the picture and you're questioning and you're doubting, did I make the right choice? Did I make the right decision? Is this like a merry-go-around that I can't really escape from? If it's a merry-go-around that I can't really escape from, then is it because, you know, it's meant to be? Is it in the cards for me? And so I feel as if you're having a lot of doubt about a decision that was recently made you don't give a lot of credence to it and it's not plaguing you in a way where i feel like um it, it interferes with your daily activities but crowning this reading what you're really thinking about and what is kind of like um in the back of your mind we have the hangman waiting in suspension waiting for a situation waiting for some contact waiting for uh, a, a turnaround okay and i also feel like there's an emotional connection here um deeply emotional and deeply spiritual a, an emotional and spiritual connection that you have with another person and i feel almost like the universe is telling you you know you have to be like this bat having blind faith, okay? Listening to your inner guidance, listening to that voice within to navigate and to find your way. Because in this space, everything is, is, is pitch black, okay? The environment is really dark inside a bat cave. And you're not supposed to, you know, feel your way around to make sure that you're safe. You're not supposed to you're not supposed to be able to see. You're not supposed to know the outcome. Are you going to have a good harvest? Are things going to work out? 
you're not privy to that information and what you need to do is just you know have have faith that in this in this ambience of like lack of information lack of knowing lack of knowledge lack of ability to predict outcomes it's talking about you know making the choice to really trust okay so let me talk to, uh, a little bit about this concept here queen of feathers okay and this is like i always look at this and i think of it as like um gemini libra aquarius it's like the perfect embodiment especially for uh gemini in the traditional rider weight deck this is the queen of swords okay and the queen of swords she's on her throne she's looking usually towards the right she has her hand one hand outstretched the other hand is holding up this big sword ready to cut okay and so let me just let that imagery sit with you for a moment because i feel like this is you this is like you know once burned twice shy okay your hand is outstretched on, on one hand but the other hand is holding up a sword just in case right i'm going to reach out but i have this this tool at my disposal to cut to hurt just in case the other person doesn't act correct or you know it's a situation where you're sending out like very mixed messages right on the one hand you want that connection you you want to reach out but on the other hand you're very defensive and so when we're dealing with that energy where we're like one foot in and one foot out or like one foot out the door testing the water and then retreating it's almost as if you're flip-flopping you're not really sure what you're going after you're not really sure you're you're not really sure what you really want okay and just imagine if you're dealing with somebody who is making their intentions very clear, like the Queen of Swords, okay? Who is very serious minded. The Queen of Swords is also someone who's very serious minded. But the fact is, so just imagine for a moment, you know, if the shoe were on the other foot and you're dealing with someone who's like flip flopping, waffling, constantly one foot out the door and constantly sending mixed messages how frustrating would it be to deal with that person right and so i feel like you know once again swap that energy and try to understand the sonar waves the the sounds the messages the intention that is going into you know your energy and how that energy is being perceived by the people around you the lover's card is your card is the card of gemini is the twin it's like the the twin flame type of energy where you know you you have like um you have i i feel this like being of two minds okay split personality being of two minds your heart wants one thing your mind is telling you otherwise and with the queen of swords here the mind always overrules what the heart wants and so you could never reach a state of satisfaction your mind wants the the safe choice the practical things the stability your heart wants to roam your heart wants freedom it wants excitement it wants like all of these things that are considered frivolous risky um but you know rewarding like emotionally very rewarding but i feel like you're built in such a way that your heart always um lose out it, it loses out and you end up you know physically very happy but emotionally it can be a little bit empty and so i feel like the message for you especially as we you know run into 2020 2020 is a very stable year okay so the the numbers reduces to a number four and the number four it is about family it is about um if you look at the astrology wheel the number four is about the home the mother 
the parts of ourselves that have been conditioned since childhood, okay? And uh, it's about our emotional needs, how we fulfill our emotional needs. So the number four year for all of the signs, and especially for you guys, it's about honoring and respecting what you need emotionally in order to be fulfilled. And I feel like all of these things are not supposed to make sense. You know, so for example, uh, you have work the next day, right? And you're just like, oh, I can't sleep, but I really need to go to sleep because I have work the next day. But I really want to watch this movie. So your mind rationally, you're like, I need to get to sleep. And then, but then your heart is like, I really want to watch this movie. And the movie is like two hours. So I'm going to miss out on two hours of sleep. But I'm going to be so happy during this, these two hours that I'm watching this movie. And so I feel as if that that rational part of your your mind always wins you know it's like okay we need to sleep early we need to be disciplined we need to do things that are practical we need to just um let go of frivolous things and i also feel like you know with this strong energy of that number four coming into the picture it was a way of life for you it was like childhood conditioning we have to do what is uh, expected of us. We have to do what, um, I wanna say like, once we make a promise, we have to keep it. Once we choose a course of action, we have to follow it through. There, you know, it's, it's like, it's very fatalistic. It's like, failure is not an option. Once I choose this path, I have to walk alongside it or I have to walk along this path. I can't deviate from my plans. But you know, things change, circumstances will come up where whatever path you've taken, it might not be applicable for you anymore. You might have outgrown this path, you might have outgrown this situation, and yet you're still walking down this path because it's expected of you. So I feel like the year 2020 is really urging you, are you feel, still getting the emotional satisfaction on this path that you are blindly taking? Is it time for you to redirect your attention towards a different calling? So you have some choices here and I feel like there's so much riding on it. You know, like that farmer, um, a bad harvest could be the end of his life. He could starve. Whereas a good harvest can, you know, equate to so many new blessings that can come into his life. And so you're grappling with a lot of decisions and I almost feel like there is a decision here that you're making. And I, I'm sensing that you're putting so much expectation into this one single decision that it might not be fair. So if it's a person, you're putting a lot of expectations and I don't feel that it's fair for the other person. If it's like a change in job, for example, you're putting so much expectations on the new location, on the job. Um, you're expecting that thing, that, that decision, that job, that person to fulfill everything that you've wanted. So keep in mind that you've been suppressing, you know, your emotional needs for quite some time. And all of it is, is bursting at the seams, right? It's coming up in the month, uh, in the year of 2020 for you to re-examine. And it's like years of pent up, you know, self-denial, right? Not in a rational way, but I feel like, like denying yourself of, of like things that make you really happy. And then coming into this moment and you're just like, going for something and then or, or thinking about going for something jumping at something jumping at an opportunity leaping towards a new way of life and you're expecting it to fulfill all of your expectations or all of your all the longings that you've been suppressing in the past and you know that's a huge load to carry and so it's really asking you, you know, to kind of like balance out your expectations a little bit and to be a little bit realistic because what we have with this, the, the traveler, this is the full card 
It's a really pretty depiction. It's a gazelle jumping from one cliff to the next, okay? So this is a card about total abandonment, okay? Like throwing caution to the wind, embarking on a new phase in your life, wanting to jump for joy, and having blind faith, pretty much. So you're coming from a space where you might have been closed off, defensive, flip-flopping, um, one foot out the door, and you're jumping into a new phase where you're all in, okay? Like no holds barred, like caution to the wind. And I feel like this has been a, like long in the making. You don't have any baggage that's holding you back. You're kind of like in the limelight. All It's like everything coming to light with the sun in the background. And so I feel as if if the month of January started out with a lot of uncertainty, there's going to be clear answers, decisions, and resolutions coming through at the end of January. You're going to be very sure about what it is that you're going for. So with this choice that you're making, you know, do I make the rational choice or do I follow whatever is in my heart? At the end of the road, the end of January 2020, we have here the Ten of Wands, okay? This is pretty much the unburdening process, okay? The Ten of Wands is all the obstacles, all the things that kind of bogged us down. Um, possibly expectations from other people, responsibilities that we have to take up, and uh, things that we, we do out of obligation, out of uh, the sense of responsibility. And we don't have to live in that or, or burden ourselves with that anymore because we have a new phase that is coming into our lives to ask us to shed the baggage, okay? Shed the responsibility and just kind of like live our life a little bit more unencumbered and a little bit more free. So what's really um, kind of... Um, I want to say, this is what it feels like to me, the way the cards are depicted, okay, and the energies. It's like, this is where you are right now. You're still in that dark cave. You're trying to figure out your way. You're trying to figure out what to do. And this is the outcome, which is really positive. It's like turning over a new page and um you know being in a situation where you're really hopeful really free so while you do have a lot of success here i feel like your heart feels a little bit heavy to me there's a lot of uncertainty a lot of unknowns a lot of waiting on situations and so what's kind of like in between what you have to kind of jump over to get yourself from here where you are to here what's waiting for you in the future are these two cards and I have here the star. And I feel like this is about, you know, dreaming big, okay? Um, not putting yourself in a situation where you feel like you have to choose. Where you have to forego something in order to achieve something else. And I also feel like denying yourself something that you really want because you feel like it wasn't practical. You feel like nothing can come out of it. And you feel almost like being in a state of worry and anxiety all the time. And once we are constantly, you know, living in a, in, in a space of lack, if we've been living in it and dwelling in it and you know building a life around it for a really long time that's all we know and then we can't really possibly wrap our heads around the fact that it doesn't have to be like this we can make some changes we can have it all we don't have to compromise one thing for another you know not everything has to come at you know the, the expense of like opportunity costs so i feel as if you might have been in a situation where you don't know how to achieve it all. You don't know how you can possibly get things moving. You don't know how you can, 
you, you don't know how you can get out of it. And then whatever opportunities come through, Four of Cups, you've turned it down. So you're stuck here. And every opportunity that, that comes through, you're like, no, I, I, I don't want to do that. Or I don't want to do this. Or I'm turning it down. And, and for no other reason than, you know, it's too risky. It's too much. It's, it's not enough. Or it, it's, it's not going to take me towards this one thing that I really want. So you might have turned it down. And so I feel like you need to jump over this hurdle. And the hurdle is pretty much, there's something that is on the offer. It is at first glance, or when you first look at it, it's very minuscule. In your mind, the potential of it is, is very, very little. It's like, you know, that farmer with the individual seeds, right? Each seed is very, very small. And in the greater scheme of things, if like his entire crop dies out and only one thing survives, he still can't, you know, recover from it, right? He can't sustain himself on like one grain of corn or kernel of corn or one grain of um, wheat. So I feel like whatever is on the offering for you, you might, turn your nose up at it and you might say it's, it's not enough it's too small in the greater scheme of things I want more but what's really embodying it is the star which is it's everything that you've actually hoped for you just don't know it yet and so I feel like the universe is kind of like yanking your chain it, it's it's almost like I, I just feel like somebody's yanking your chain somebody is telling you you know, uh, it, it, being tested. There we go. Somebody's testing you. Like, you need to take this first so that we know you're not flip-flopping. Accept this, and then we'll give you more. So once you accept this, you kind of like send out your signal to the universe that I'm, I'm all in. I'm on board. I'm going to take this. And then I feel that you will be offered more and more and more. And then eventually you'll be offered exactly what it is that you desire. And so I do sense here, things are happening in very small increments, okay? And things are happening one, happening one step at a time, one stage at, the t at a time, because you're being tested to make sure that you are 100% decisive and in this, before the universe can give you exactly what you want. So we have here the lover's card. So this is your card and the star card. So you're both, you're, you're headed, your heart and your mind. That's what I mean by both. Your heart and your mind is in alignment. And that's really important. When we're doing something half-heartedly, our hearts and our, our, our mind are not in alignment. Okay, we're just going through the motions. And when we're just going through the motions, doing something half-heartedly, the result is never going to be good enough. And so I feel like, you know, the you need to get your heart and your mind into alignment. And you need to be physically, emotionally, spiritually ready to embark on this new task, this new thing, this new venture. And I feel like it is very new. It's outside of your comfort zone. So, you know, the, the bat needs to get out of his cave, needs to get out of his home to find food, to find nourishment, to find opportunities, right? Whatever it is, your heart and your mind needs to be in alignment in order for you to achieve this. And this is the star. And the star is wish fulfillment. It's about, you know, having, having whatever it is that you desire. Things coming full circle, pretty much. So Gemini's, that's pretty much what is hindering you from the outcome. And I feel like you're in a position where you're ready to leap, okay? Um, I'm looking at this elk here. It looks like a deer. It looks like a deer, but I, I look at it almost like an elk. You know, elks are really heavy. Uh, they're really big creatures and they're really heavy. And it seems like the elk can't jump, right? Whereas the, the gazelle can, okay? So this is all about 
shedding things or letting go of things that are just um, bogging you down, weighing you down so that you can jump, so that you can leap, so you can be a lot more free. This is family expectations here. This is societal expectations. This is like doing something because it was done in the past and you never question it. Doing something that's no longer serving its purpose in your life. So the hangman is about looking at things from a different perspective. Is it still relevant? Is it still helpful? Is it helping me in any way or is it hindering my progress? So you, I feel like you have to re-examine some of the habits, some of the things that you are taking on and figuring out whether or not they are still applicable and relevant to your life right now and whether or not they're still, you know, making you happy. But I, I do feel here there is a calling that is very specific to you. You can hear it. And I feel like it's, uh, it's really asking you to have blind faith, to jump into something and to um, go for something. Even if, you know, initially it doesn't make sense. It doesn't seem like it's practical. It doesn't seem, it, it seems like it's overturning your expectations. And so you might have felt like, oh, it wasn't good enough. And now, I feel that you're looking at it from a different perspective and you're going after it. It wasn't good good enough in the past, but you're regretting that decision possibly to turn it down and now you're going after it. And I feel like the window of um, the, the time frame or the window of opportunity is narrowing. I do see a situation where it is narrowing and somebody is exiting, you know, like um, leaping forward with their new life. Okay. Um, I will leave it at that, Geminis. Um, I hope this reading resonates with you. I hope that it is helpful for you in navigating the energies for January 2020. I will be back with um, next month's reading, hopefully on time. So I apologize once again. Um, for those who are interested in a private reading, I have a link in the description box below for a colleague of mine. Her name is Bridget. She's based out of California. So if you're interested in, you know, spiritual guidance, if you have, if you're dealing with this and you're not sure what the future holds for you, especially, I highly recommend a, a reading with her. Um, her website is in the description box below where you can, you know, click on it and you click on the link and you can book a reading. Um, you can choose the time and the date. It's very simple and uh, hopefully you can, you know, get some guidance. Um, I will be back very soon for your February reading. I wish you all the best. Take care and have a wonderful new year. Bye.